Hi, Scott Whitley here. Hope you're doing well. This week's video is a little bit different to the kind of content I usually produce. A couple of weeks ago, I made the super positive decision to really start building the YouTube channel and uploading videos every single week on the same day at the same time. And that's going to be Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. UK time. And with that in mind, I decided it was about time I overcame my fears and started interviewing other bass players for the channel. Wednesday just gone, I did just that and conducted my very first interview. I'm still alive and to tell the truth, I quite enjoyed it once I relaxed into the interview. I'm very keen to hear your thoughts, so please drop them in the comments box below. Also, if there's somebody that you'd like me to interview, uh, drop that in the comments box below and we can certainly try and make it happen. If we haven't met before, my name's Scott Whitley and I regularly make content like this to help you improve your bass playing. So please subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified whenever I make a new video. So without further ado, here's the interview. I'll see you at the end. Good morning folks and uh, welcome to the channel. This morning, um, we've got a great treat for you. Um, I'm talking to... <laughs> Uh, someone that's, I, I think I can call him a friend, we've met a few times on tour, um, and he's a super talented uh, guy, he's equally adept on bass uh, and guitar, maybe other things, I think so actually, from, from what I've seen this morning. Uh, so please uh, give a big welcome to Nathan King, good morning. Insert applause track here. Hello, <laughs> hello Scott, how you doing man, you alright? I'm all right. I'm all right. How has been? How has lockdown been treating you? It's. Do you know what? It's. It's okay. I have to say, um, we're we're very fortunate. You know, I live out in the countryside, and um, uh, you know, every we, we all get on as a family, and it's been all right. You know, obviously work wise, um, it's it's been a, a bit of a an upset. You know, because a lot of my work, as I'm sure yours. Uh, is is um is live shows you know and of course we haven't yeah. had any of those now for 12 months you know it's been a year that's right. that we haven't had those um so that's been a bit odd uh because you know it was, it's been from like crazy busy you know sort of live shows for as long as i can remember for decades you know yeah all of a yeah. sudden just having having none at all but that's okay you know so uh, it's just uh, i've had to adapt um i mean i've had my, my kids have only just gone back to school at uh, a couple two days ago, and they've been off school since Christmas, so that's been nine right. weeks. Um, my wife, fortunately, is still uh, able to work, um, so I've just been homeschooling my two nippers uh, for right. nine weeks, you know, for better or worse. <laughs> uh, and uh, and then, of course, going back to last year, um, I mean, my daughter didn't go to school for six months because you had the the, the original lockdown, and then yep. they had their summer holidays as well. So uh, yeah, it, it's it, yeah, I've been at home a lot. <laughs> but it's all right because I don't mind that. So uh, yeah, very very long-winded answer to your question. It's it's all right, thanks, mate. Yeah, it's okay. No, that's great to hear. You know, everybody's got, kind of got different stories. Uh, I know there's been a lot of um, a lot of musicians suddenly doing a lot of DIY <laughs> that they did doing for years. Oh you know, yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, that was the first thing I did. I just painted the entire outside of the house. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was my project. <laughs> there you go. So you first came to my attention when um i saw you playing with level 42 some years well quite a number of years ago actually um and uh you know kind of look you up online and all the rest of it they were and um and <laughs> yeah, be, be careful be careful when you do that folks. yeah <laughs> and uh yeah so i discovered that you you've you know obviously um you play bass as well you know like a serious bass player uh, you play with Frost, um, It Bites, and many other kind of acts. And of course, later on, um, I found out that you were depping. You've always, you've certainly done dep gigs with the Blockheads on guitar and bass. Um, well, and well, do you know, funny enough, I've actually depped for all four original members. So I've done it on um, <laughs> git on bass uh, for Norman, on guitar for Johnny Turnbull, and on keys for uh mickey gallagher and chance jankel doing keys and guitar so uh, yeah i've actually really? uh, yes yeah that, that which has been uh, the enormous fun I, i've been so fortunate to work with those guys um yeah because they're just just such lovely dudes you know and and also the music is just the best i, I grew up with that stuff you know because yeah yeah I, I think as you were saying the other day we're of a similar vintage 
And uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I remember my dad had um, new boots and panties, you know, in 1977 when it came out. So uh, Right. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah. He used to have that crank right up in the car. <laughs> you know, he used to drop me off at primary school, you know, which had a very amusing... Uh, results because of course there's some very sweary bits in that album <laughs> yeah so of course you know that bit would come on incredibly loud you know and then he'd have to, to try and turn it down so, oh, sh- 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 with the windows open you know on a lovely sunny day and then Ian Jury suddenly this big uh, load of expletives you know <laughs> turn it down and then he'd turn it up on a stake and it'd get worse so yeah the block is Oh, that, that fantastic! Yeah, what a, what a great opportunity that's been. Yeah, um, yeah so I mean, yeah, so so bass and guitar and uh, you know, uh, oh yeah, a bit of drums. Uh, I've done, uh, you know, so I've actually you know done some gigs on drums, um, you know, which weren't awful, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah. and keys as well because keys are, I learnt from very early on. From about four, the age of four, I went to, I had piano lessons. And also, um, because um, Mark, my brother, um, was originally a drummer, there were also yeah. drums in the house as well, drums lying around. So I kind of taught myself to play those too. So originally, it would have been piano and drums, which ironically is right. what I went on to to be known for. No. But that's kind of what I started off doing. Uh, and then and then bass, um, when I was, a, I think, about 12, um, yeah. you know, Mark, Mark um, left home when I was – Quite young. He left, but he was 18, so I would have been about six, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he moved off to London, you know, and started doing his thing. Yeah. And uh, and then I sort of got a bit older, and, uh, you know, the Love 42 thing started coming to the fore. And I thought, oh, yeah, bass, I hadn't really thought about that, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I was very lucky. My mum sort of badgered uh, Mark and uh, got him to lend me a bass, you know, and I just kind of picked it up. And it was it was very a, a natural thing for me, actually. I sort of got hold of it. Got my head around it pretty quick. Yeah, I suppose because I'd had the benefit of of being able to play the drums a bit, you know. And there's a lot yeah, of that sure. involved in the bass. Uh, yeah, and, and guitar has come a lot later. Actually, I, I'd always kind of dabbled with it, um, but never played it, um, you know, uh, properly. Uh, I guess till I started playing with Mark, which was about 1998. So a lot later. Right, right. Sort yeah. of late twen- late twenties, really. It sounds like it. it it's uh, it, it, it's uh, honestly pun just leaping out here. It sounds like it must run in the family. The uh, you know the the. I've the never heard that up. one before. <laughs> Honest to God, that was not planned. That's terrible. Um, that you know, you jump on bass and, and it feels natural. Uh, so, from what you said there, just quite interestingly, was Mark switch to bass? Like after he left, was that not something you kind of witnessed at home, as it were, or was he dabbling a bit in bass? He absolutely he was. Off. He absolutely wasn't. No, um, no, no. I mean, like, that was. I was still very young at the time. But he was a drummer when he left the Isle of Wight. He yeah. was a drummer, and that's what yeah. he started off doing uh, when he moved to London. He was doing um, a band called Reflex and uh, playing drums in it. And uh, yeah, the, 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 the bass playing came. But obviously, he must have found it very easy too, because within yeah. no time at all. He was suddenly, uh, you know, almost a virtuoso bass player, you know, overnight. So, uh, yeah. That's, yeah, really yeah. fast. Mm, oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite, quite extraordinary. But uh, that's, yeah, kind of how it went. Definitely in the family. Yeah. So where do you feel most at home? You know, which instrument out of the, the instruments you play, do you feel this is actually home? Or is it kind of like an equal thing? Yeah, it, it ch- it's changed over the years. For, for years, it was bass, funnily enough, because that's what I just did all the time. Yeah, um, you know, when, when I started going out and gigging, I sort of, I was about fifteen, I suppose, and I started playing in pubs and stuff on the Isle of Wight, and uh, yeah. playing bass, and then moved to London when I was eighteen, and again, just it was, that's kind of what I did, you know. Yeah, wrote songs and stuff on guitar. I can't hear dabbled a little bit on the guitar, but the gigs thing was always bass, and that's always what I felt more confident on, what I was more used to. And then later on, of course, I started doing the guitar thing, um, you know, with. Uh, <coughs> Mark and Level 42, and um, yeah. funnily enough, became more known as a, a, a guitar player than a bass player, you know. And then the, the, the two, I suppose, uh, kind of sort of evened up. And the other stuff has just always been in the background, you know, the the, the, yeah. the keys and the, and the drums and stuff has just always kind of been there. And I think these days, I suppose I'm more interested in just making music. 
as right. opposed to just focusing on any one thing, you know, because I'll get bored ever so easily. You know, I, I'm really, I'm terrible. I, I never sit down and practice <laughs> or do anything like that. Uh, certainly not, um, you know, on the bass or anything, which I should do. Uh, but I just don't, I just find it really tedious. But I, but I do enjoy making music. I mean, we were talking about lockdown and a, a great thing that's come out of lockdown um, for me is, is, is being able to do um, a lot more creative stuff here in my right. little mess of a studio. It's just, honestly, if you can see it in there, it's, just, it's awful. There's stuff everywhere. It's, it's a mess. <laughs> um, looks fine to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, no, this bit does. You want to see over there. <laughs> and um, uh, I, I'd, I've had various people sort of getting in touch saying, oh, do you, can you play on this? Uh, yeah, you know, track or can you contribute? Do you want to do some writing and you want to do this? And of course, you know, there, there's been more time to do that. Yeah, um, and um, it's it's something that I really enjoy. You know, I love because also I, we keep talking about playing. What I've also done always uh, is is sing. You uh, know, right, I, yeah, I've always of course. I've always really enjoyed singing. So I've always been always trying to nail sort of uh, the BBs and stuff because that's always been important in a lot of the bands I've, that I've played in. Yeah, and I, I worked out very early on that if you can sing well, you know, it makes you even more sort of um, sought after, you know, because completely, that, a, you know, if you can do good BVs, that's a, a really handy skill to have, you know. And I've had my own bands in the past, which I've sort of been the main vocalist of. So uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I, there's nothing I love more than just sitting down and and working on BVs. You know, I just get logic up and. Um, you know, if, it's, if I've got a track that needs some vocals on it, I just I love it. I just absolutely love layering up my yeah. harmonies. It's, a, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, just, yeah it's just I've always enjoyed it. I've always really been into stuff that, that's had massive harmonies, you know, whether it yeah. be Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young or the Eagles or, um, you know, it, it's so, you know, so many great bands like that. Um, and I just really dig it, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, you know, it, it seems... Sometimes, anyway, that it, it sort of started to become a, a lost art to a degree, you know. Um, but uh, speaking of well, the it's vocals, funny because well, some people just don't have it at all, you know. Um, some people don't have hardly any backing vocals, a lot of, of acts, and uh, when you that really stands out when you hear that, but, it does, uh, and, it does, and, and, that, and that's absolutely fine. A lot of bands don't need it, um, but it's just something that I really enjoy doing, you know. Yeah, I, I love it too. And actually, one one of our uh, common uh, friends actually is Mickey Gallagher, who obviously uh, plays keys in in the Blockheads. Mm -hmm. And I was in the Animals for a little while, and Mickey plays in the Animals, as, as you well know. And um, and I remember actually when you'd just done your first one or two uh, depths with the Blockheads, because. Because believe it or not, I was kind of, I, I've actually had Blockheads dates in myself. I had about three dates over the period of like two years. And none of them actually came off because no one became available. I, you know, how inconsiderate. <laughs> but, uh, and each time, yeah. And each time it was like the full learn. I mean, it's like, it's a fair old set to learn, right? You know, and it's like. Well, it can oh, right, be. Okay. If, it's, if it's the full sort of, um, yeah, you know, an hour and 45 minutes, there's a lot of stuff in there, yeah. Yeah. But the reason I mention it is um, Mickey. You know, when, when when you did that first couple of depths, I mean, he was like raving about you. And that's the thing. No, it's not the thing. But one of the things that really blew his mind was that you were straight on the BVs. You know, he didn't expect that. And and it makes such a massive impression. So exactly what you said there, you know, it's... Uh, oh, bless him. Oh, that, what a lovely guy, eh, Mickey? Yeah, he, he cashed the check the next day. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, that's I, I, and again, you know, I, like I say, I worked out pretty early on that if you do that, if you, if you really do your homework, because that's what I've always um, really focused on. I've always gone into any sort of gig environment knowing what's going on. I've always done my homework as as, as much as I can. You know, I've mm -hmm. never gone it because a lot of these things, you know, we talk about the blockers. There's no rehearsals. You just have to no. go and do the gig. You have to turn up and do the gig spot perfectly, um, you know, straight off, off the bat like that. Yeah. You know, you don't get in a room for two weeks or anything like that. But it's the same with rehearsals. I never go into rehearsals not knowing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing because rehearsals aren't for that. The rehearsals aren't for learning songs. They're for no. getting it all polished, you know. Um, so, uh, again, I, I worked out fairly early on that, that you've got to turn up absolutely nailing all of it you know and for me that yeah. includes the bbs because if I, it's it was a bit easier for, with the blockers because 
I've been such a fan anyway. Right. You know, I, the, the, all the all the, the the classic hits. I knew any. I knew them anyway. You know, so it's, yeah. it's fairly easy for me. Although it's funny how how much of it you get wrong. <laughs> uh, because um, the, and the, and the fellas always, uh, you know, sort of pull you aside after a gig and, and sort of laugh at you. Because I've done it on guitar as well for Johnny Turnbull, you know, and Norman. Yeah. He don't care. He's, he's ripping apart. <laughs> Oi, what's that you're singing? What a load of nonsense. Not that, you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah that's, that's the sort of notes I get. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. I love it. Um yeah. Well, speaking about that kind of thing, it's it's clear because because one of the things that you've um, you've actually become quite known for uh, is is doing the the Andertons thing, you know, the um, all about yeah. the bands thing. People, yeah, that's, that's been that's been a that. fun that's a funny sort of development, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but very cool. Um, and and the reason I kind of brought that up is obviously I've, I've watched a bunch of those, um, not least because you've actually. You know, demoed or, or or reviewed my own bass design, which was really yes. cool. Yeah. Um. But but it's really clear that you're like a great improviser. You know, you've you've you you know you can just like groove on the you know massive improviser. And yet, um. Well, they the are. Is- it's it's kind of the nature of 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 those Anderson shows are. Yeah. Um. That, that we never. I tell you, we never. That's not entirely true because sometimes we've done some um sounds like things. Um, right. So we've done a little bit of preparation and got like a backing track together, you know, and, and learned yeah. the part because you have to, if you're going to sound like him, you have to know the part. But for, I'd say for the majority of it, um, we, we literally, I, I take my my MacBook in and plug it into their system and just, you know, get like a some drum beat up, you know, and, and the guy I do it with, uh, Lee Voss, um, yep. says, is that all right? And he goes, yeah, go on then. And we just start playing, like just literally yeah. anything. And then you know he'll jump on on it, and then I'll jump on it, and uh, yeah, it, it's very spontaneous like that, you know. And sometimes it works really well, other times not so well. But you know, it's it's just a, a, a not, again a nice skill um, yeah. that I've always been fortunate enough to have is just being able to just get play anything, you know, just pick the bass up and just make something up out of my head without having to kind of pre think about it, you know. Yeah, completely. Uh, and, and it's funny how the Andersons thing sort of came about because I never. <laughs> you know, really had any great desire to do that. Um, it was completely uh, coincidental. A, a good friend of mine, Nigel Spenowin, uh, who, who was a, a bandmate of mine for years, years and years and years, a great guitar player. And he also uh, works for Sewer Guitars. He's like the Sewer rep for like, right. the, all of Europe, I think, and Asia and everywhere. Yeah. And he was around at Anderson's, um, you know, obviously trying to flog on some guitars and uh, having a chat with Lee. Yeah, how's it going with the? Because they had a lot of the, the the guitar thing had been up and running a, a long time by then. You know the guitar show. Yeah, and they said, "Oh yeah, it's all good." He said, "You know any? You don't know any bass players here that that could front this? I want to do like a channel um, for the for the bass. You know, we've got all these guitar stuff, but we haven't got yeah. anything covering the bass. Do Do you know anybody?" And Nigel, um, very kindly, thought of me. And um, cool. I, that's that was it. Literally, he sort of introduced us, and then Lee Anderson said, "Well, come over next Wednesday." And I I thought he he was we we're just going to have a chat about it. You know, you know this right. is what we do. Um, you know, this is the format, and how do you how do you feel about doing it? And that. and I did, sat down, and he literally handed me a bass and went, "Go." He said, "This is the <laughs> Ibanez, blah 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 blah." And that literally that. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> and that went up like on the on the Friday. That went up right. as a video. So what yeah. a baptism of fire that was! <laughs> Completely, yeah, yeah. But it's, it, it it works really well, and I think that um, you know you, that spontaneity and 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 that you know it, it's obviously you, it comes across the the, the fun factor um, and you know, oh, yeah. the chemistry between you two. It's it's great. You know, it's a really enjoyable watch. I mean, uh, the, you know the the views that it gets obviously you know reflects that. It, it was. I've always wanted it to be fun um, because it has to be, you know, for just for, for to keep it interesting. Obviously for us, but obviously just for other people, you know. I, I, I'm sure some people like really detailed stuff, but I, I, I it, it, it's I can't stand it, you know, all that the really nerdy technical stuff. So you know, there has to be an element of humour in it for me. Um, yeah. And it's funny because the, the, for about the first year, I did it with um, Lee Anderton. Um, you right. know, and we, we, uh, our, our episodes just got crazier and crazier. He'd start getting vocoders out and beatboxes, you know, and it was just really, sorry, going nuts. And then he felt like he was over, um, 
uh, exposed, I think, because he was doing all the guitar stuff as well. So we got um, uh, Lee Vossin, who was working there at the time. He was head of the guitar department. Yeah. And he's great. He's an amazing, I don't know if you've, you know, you obviously you check Lee's playing. He's a great, great bass player. And he's he a great is. musician. He's a great guitar player as well. Right. Uh, and uh, and that was that was great. Uh, you know, he came in and that, that, that you know, we kicked off uh, straight away, you know, and uh, he's he's been doing it with me ever since. So, yeah, nice. Long may it continue. Yeah, he's a lovely guy. I met him at Nam uh, briefly, and uh, yeah, lo lovely chap, you know. Um, but one of the, one of the things I, I was kind of going to get around to there is, ob it, you know, obviously from that it's really clear that you you're a great improviser uh, and all that, and um, and a lot of the gigs that <laughs> very well, uh, a lot of the stuff that uh, that you you've seen doing in the public, you know, like the level forty two thing. Um, I've never actually seen you with the blockheads, uh, but um, Frost. Um, I've actually been watching a lot of that this morning, and um, mm. which is it's bloody good, by the way. Um, Thank you. But that's m much more arranged, right? So, 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 what I was going to ask you is, do you do you kind of like still try to aim to improvise within those shows, or do you? I mean, obviously, you got to stick to the you know the main parts and stuff, or do you try and just kind of emulate the same thing? Do you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, it's it's with with the level forty two thing because it is quite a tightly choreographed show. I say choreographed yeah. in the loosest sense of the word. There's not much choreography going on, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I do, of course. Yeah, uh, and um, you know the the set is kind of set out because that's because we've Mark's designed a set that works really well. You know, so um, yeah. Uh, we we that kind of has to follow uh, a sort of pattern. Certain patterns, a few solo bits and stuff that we can improvise in, but generally that is quite laid out, you know, as as it should be. Yeah. Because of course, you know, people want to come and hear the stuff as as they know it, and we try and make it as you know as as near to the original as we can. Yeah. And stay faithful to that. Um, other things, a little bit different, I suppose. Frost. Um, again, the arrangements are always going to be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, but um you know i i will generally you know i i will be able to move uh around inside the the, the framework and i never want to get too far away from it though because it kind of defeats yeah. the object to me you know um you kind of have to stick to the, the part otherwise it just people don't know what's going on and it all just flies off in the out of yeah, space of know? course yeah yeah because it's, yeah. it's not that sort of music you know exactly uh yeah uh Blockheads, of course, the parts of the parts. Yeah, that g generally stuff is quite structured, but that's all right. I, I like that, you know, because that's. Yeah. I think that's how it should be. Because what made those songs great in the first place is exactly though, uh, is all the, the parts of the song, you know. And uh, if you change it too much, it's not that song anymore. So the um, point. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I generally, we'll, we'll, you know, we would kind of stick to it, you know. And I save my experimental jazz for uh, <laughs> for in here. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah just um just just wondering about you know you, you've you've talked about uh you, you started on drums and piano and i'm kind of guessing the piano involved formal lessons maybe uh, but, but it, it totally that, did yeah it, it was weird um because the, in those days that was um just that's you know what you did you know and i like, i remember going to my piano teacher miss maskell who was about 130 years old then you know back in 1974 <laughs> or whatever it was and uh yeah it really was absolutely sort of just bark and bait oven and and all that sort of stuff which i have to say didn't um turn me on in the least you know i found it right. really tedious but i still had to go into the lessons you know um and um because i you know i had I'd, I'd, I'd all these great things to listen to when i was growing up i was very very lucky because we had some real real good music in the house you know at home yeah when i grew up uh because uh mum and dad were, were great uh music fans yeah um and and i've got my two elder sisters as well uh, you know, they were into some really cool stuff like um, Free and Bad Company and all that. All, all that right. Was knocking around. And then, of course, Mark, you know, was into all this sort of muso stuff. What? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm full of the puns. I said, all right, and then just added now, but anyway. Oh, sorry, man. I didn't <laughs> catch that. I was, I, I was rambling. <laughs> um, and, and then Mark had all this real sort of heavy duty muso stuff, right? So he, was, he had like Return to Forever, Mahavishnu Orchestra. 
He had yeah. the Jacko uh, first album, uh, Bill right. Bruford, you know, with Jeff Berlin and Alan Holdsworth and just uh, uh, Dave Stewart. It's just all this mind blowing stuff. So I don't, yeah. and, uh, um, you yeah, know, it was like Stevie Wonder songs in the key of life that was in the, in the record collection. It was just incredible, you know, and the Stones, yeah. my mum was a big Stones fan, just this real eclectic mix of music, um, that I sort of listened to. And of course, you know, the, the, the last thing I wanted to do was sit down and play Bark on the piano. Right. But anyway, that's, that's kind of, the, that's how it worked, you know. So, yeah, I, I, I sort of did it. I did that. Until I was, yeah, until I, I built up the, comp- the courage to say, I don't want to do this anymore, you know, the piano list. <laughs> yeah. And mum said, oh, all right, you only had to say. And I thought, oh, no, I could have said that. <laughs> really? <easy."> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so I was kind of jacked it in. But I still, it's kind of something I've rediscovered the piano uh, recently, because my daughter, um, who was oh, nine, actually, just uh, on Monday, um, is now learning uh, a piano, so she's having some lessons at school. Right and and um, so we I got a really nice um, Yamaha um, uh, piano, you know, one of those full size yeah. weighted digital piano. Really nice, really lovely thing. Um, yeah, and, yeah. Um, and she so got that in the set up in the living room, you know. And when she comes home with a sort of exercise bar, I sort of sit down with her and we go through it. And it's it's amazing how much I, I've, I've forgotten, but and now rediscovered as, as far as sort of reading music and the theory. Uh, right. And all that sort of stuff, you know, because I did all that, obviously, when I was a nipper. And yeah. then as I sort of moved away from it, I kind of forgot it all, you know. And now um, it's, I was kind of rediscovering it, which is, which is nice. Which is it's nice. really cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and, it, and it's up, obviously, which was nice. you know, <laughs> it's obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's been underlying there. Some of that information ob- obviously is, you know, in whatever way it stood you in in good step and of course the other thing oh, it, 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 it all totally has i mean it's all been absolutely essential you know i was so lucky to have to have had to go to piano lessons because it, it was it's such a great grounding in the harmony and, and everything you know um so yeah. no I'm, I'm really grateful that i had it and it's it's absolutely all coming useful. and again just with the drums knocking around in the house really lucky uh because um it's it's all the, the, it's all the where you come from musically, you know. So sure, yeah. And so I, I just wonder how you can relate to this. I mean, um, obviously we've said earlier we're a similar vintage, um, and uh, yes. you know wh- wh- when when I was <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean I wasn't I didn't have those you know same uh, not, not as many if you like musical influence influences in the house as as yourself. Um, but I was lucky enough to kind of latch on to, well, funny enough, Level 42, um, Stanley Clark. I had a, two Stanley Clark albums. Uh, I had like a, you know, a Stu Ham thing, I think, and uh, a the Jacko album. You know, just like a handful of things. Um, vinyl. And I pretty much learned everything about playing from those records because that's all I had. You know, there was no, I had, didn't have a tutor. There was no internet. Um and what I'm getting at here is, I think back then, um, when people were kind of up and coming, you know, it, it, it was creating kind of unique players, you know, because you only had this kind of like little window of what you could listen to. Do you know what I mean? Yours well, was I, quite I t- wide, but not like today. It, it, what, what it, it, it was it was wider, but I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I because I'm the, I'm the same as you. I never and I've had any lessons for the bass. I just taught myself, and that was yeah. by listening to to those records, you know, that I was sort of talking right, yeah. about earlier. And you're right, it was all the great guys like Stanley Clark and Jacob Pastorius, you know, Jeff Berlin. And uh, uh, what what are, just the best stuff you could possibly listen to. I mean, the Jacko yeah. record, it just absolutely blew my mind, you know, when yeah. I was sort of the right age to hear it. I just remember putting it on and it was just, it just st- that first side, it was ab- just absolutely stunning. Yeah. You know? And um, yeah, what a great um, education, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And like I say, I think I think that kind of made players more unique because you kind of, you know, you were a mix of these albums and then this guy down here had a different set of albums and he was learning from that stuff. And I think today, in a great way, there's that much information on the internet, that much kind of base education, um, that many insane players you know that just kind of pop up like three-year-olds <laughs> you know like the best thing you've ever seen and um don't you love it when of... people tag you in those youtube things and go check this out <laughs> yeah <laughs> expletive you know uh, <sighs> but the point is that um 
I think it must be harder, I think, to find your own voice, you know, and be kind of unique today. Do you know what I mean? Because there's that much out there. Abs absolutely. I mean, there, there, there's so much being done. And this is the case for all of music, really. And that's why I think you find that it's kind of good in a way, because these days, um, it's kind of like all bets are off. You can do pretty much whatever you want. I remember there was a, a period um, all through the late 90s and the early 2000s, you could not slap the bass. You were not allowed because it was like right. a, it was a dirty word. You know, people wouldn't tolerate it. And um, that's all completely changed now because music has it, it, it sort of come full circle. It was doing it, actually, to be honest with you, in the 90s with Oasis and Blur. You know, they were kind of recycling yeah, sure. the whole Beatles kinks thing. And, um, uh, you know, and now it's great because oh, I listen to stuff um, <laughs> only when I'm driving the kids to school, you know, because my daughter says, put heart radio on, you know, and I've, I've got to suffer it. <laughs> um, but there's some really great stuff, uh, you know, like the, the, the last couple of Dua Lipa songs have just been, uh, the production line's amazing. Yeah, and it's got yeah. all these elements of the 80s and the 70s and the, the, it's all this stuff, you know. Um, and, yeah. Is again, and, and it doesn't matter now, you know, people aren't snobby about it. They don't go, oh, you can't slap the bass, it's not allowed. That's people right, actually, yeah. Uh, people are quite uh, hip to it now. Yeah. So it's great. Uh, I, I think the music's in quite a, it's, in, it's, it's gone through a very strange uh, thing, hasn't it, over these, the, over these last sort of couple of decades, you know, yeah. with, the, with the way that people uh, consume music. And I know that at the moment it's, it's not a great deal for writers and stuff because of the whole streaming thing, but it has... Mm -hmm. It seems to have made music a lot more accessible. Yeah. And uh, for better or worse. But, you know, it's that's progress. That's how it's gone, right? So we have to adapt. Completely, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you yeah, know, musically, I think you can you can play or anything now, you know, any sort of styles, and um, and people will accept it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm totally with you on the 80s thing, by the way. I mean, it wasn't just... I don't think it was just the slap thing. It was like anything, you know, the 80s synth stuff and all, anything that sounded remotely like that was like, you know, and it's, again, that's become really hip again now, which me likes. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, um, it's, it's all good, right? yeah. So uh, just to get a, bit, a little bit nerdy for a minute, if that's okay, basses, guitars, instruments, what, what, so starting with basses, what, um, what's, what's your main bass that you play and, um, and what kind well, of stuff? Well, I, I can, I have to say from the outset, I've, I've never been, um, uh, particularly sort of uh, nerdy geeky about um uh, gear um right. and that 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 includes bass stuff as well um i had um i had a, a really nice uh, warwick bass for years that mm -hmm. i played a thumb uh and uh i've had a couple of different status bases i've got like a status s2 now which i use a lot for the rockier stuff i've got a yeah. sire i've got a really nice sire Kind of, it's, it's a custom thing, um, you know, because because the Anderson's connection. I, I got to meet the guy who owns Sire, and he said, oh, I'll, 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 "He said I'll make your bass. What do you want?" I said, "Oh, lovely! Yeah. Can I uh, a jazz bass? Would be great, you know, with your your lovely preamp in it. That's what makes the Sire basses so great, is that that preamp, sure. you know, the Marcus Miller yeah. preamp." But I say, oh, "Can I get one with twenty four frets?" And magically, if one turned up, you know, a few months later, he'd knock one up. So uh, yeah, I've got kind of my own. You know, unofficial signature side bass. But um, that's great. I mean, it just sounds lovely, you know. I use yeah. that a lot for recording at the moment. Um, and that's about it, really. Um, yeah. Like I say, what, what, if I'm done with the bass, I'm not sentimental about it. It'll go. You know, it's, it's incredible because I, I look at all these, these stuff, again, Facebook. You know, you see um, on a lot of this, the, the bass uh, fan sites, you know, you see these guys put the pictures up. Here's my, you know, here's my basses. And they've just got walls full of basses. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is lovely. Um, I've never really been in a financial position to, to be able to do that. Um, so kind of <laughs> no. if a basis, um, you know, not um, not needed anymore, then it's, it's gone, you know. Um, and that's yeah. the same with me for guitars and amps and anything, really. Um, Amp-wise, again, I know guys that that that, are, that that always have to have the latest thing, you know, and the, the latest cabs and the latest amps and the latest whatever this, that, and the other. And I've, I've never really been like that, you know. If I've got a sound that I'm happy with, then I'll, I'll stick with that. And I, I've had a TC uh, R eight seven fifty or something. Is that what it's called? I say I don't even know what it's called. Right? Yeah, I'm the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and a couple of their two ten uh, cabs, and that's just been great. That's done everything I've yeah. needed it to do, you know. Um, 
so yeah, uh, guitar wise, um, I've, I've been through more stuff guitar wise, to be honest with you, over the years. I'm just trying yeah. to get a sound that I'm happy with. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still haven't really got there, but uh, <laughs> so that's a guitar yeah. thing, right? <laughs> I suppose it is. Yeah, you know, yeah. The it, it seems surge. much hard. It seems much harder to get a, a, a nice guitar sound. Uh, but uh, yeah, so you know, I, 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 it, I, I'm happy to just as long as it sounds good. Yeah, then, uh, I'll, st I'll stick with it. You know. I think that's a, a great philosophy, and um, I, I've certainly got, and a lot of people get too caught up in the uh, in the gear side of it, and and I really envy people who, you know, who do, who just, you know, you're just playing the music. That's the that's the focus, right? You know, and first um, and for, first and foremost, that's the most important thing. Yeah, and as long as you've got a, as long as you've got gear that sounds good, then that's uh, you know that's that's fine. You know, then you can get on and concentrate with uh, playing it properly. You know, that's it. So uh, just. A couple more things I had to, to, you know, to bring up. Um, first thing is actually, uh, before I forget, I noticed there's a new album coming out. Is this right? With this year in May? Am I, with I Frost? <laughs> yeah. You have absolutely got it right, yes. Uh, there's a, a new album coming out. Now, apparently, because on the blurb it says the first studio album for five years. That's true. That's unbelievable. I don't know where those five years have gone, but um, I guess wow. it must be true. And that, yeah, this album's called Day and Age. Yeah, and it's out on May Day because <laughs> so, so terrible. Put the glass on. So, so oh, hello. That was good. Did you hear that? <laughs> Top comedy moment. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, uh, it's out on May the fourteenth. See, I knew that. I can't remember anything. I've got yeah, a memory course, like yeah. a goldfish. Uh, May the fourteenth. Yes, new album, and it's a corker. It's really good. If you're a Frost fan, um, then I think you're really going to love it. Um, it's it's brilliant. You know, gem. Godfrey, uh, you know, is the genius behind the whole thing, uh, and uh, and John Mitchell, who's co-written a lot of this album, they've just done yep. such a fantastic job, you know. And I, I've been very privileged to be in that band for yeah, I think it's twelve years now. Actually, I've been wow. doing that. Yeah, it's, again, where's that time gone? You know, um, and yeah, always always great going out and playing with those guys. But yeah, the new records out, um, and uh, I, I think people are really going to like that. Yeah. Yeah, looking forward to that. I'm going to get links up, um, you know, when this goes out live to that. So uh, has that been recorded all over, you know, during lockdown or was it kind of going on before that or? The the, 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 the writing stage was, it was uh, just before and yeah. then the whole lockdown thing happened. So uh, it was all kind of done remotely. But that, to be honest with you, it is not unusual anymore because that is kind of how um that's how I, I prefer to work I, I really like to sit at home just on my own and i get my head down and i just so i can focus you know um i don't really like people breathing down my neck um you know because it always freaks me out <laughs> so yeah uh, yeah i, I just want I, I like i really like doing stuff on remote in uh, and uh you know given the option i'll always do that and of course these days well a because of lockdown we haven't had any choice but also b uh uh, you know, technology-wise, you can totally do it, you know. Absolutely. Because, um, you know, I've got a little studio set up here, but really, as long as you've got a computer and a decent audio interface, you've got a studio, right? And uh, Exactly, and yeah. Logic or whatever your weapon of choice is, then uh, you can make records, you know. And um, Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's that all, all kind of recorded remotely. And we, we're lucky because, like, you know, I say my studio is just a, you know, spare room in the garage but like john mitchell's actually got a proper uh studio out right. studios in reading you know so uh he's, he's right. has that luxury and jem's <laughs> always got a real state-of-the-art studio wherever he's living so um yeah yeah so between yes. you yeah you've got, well got the rules no it's um interesting point actually on, on the, uh, the the remote session thing um i'm exactly the same as you in that respect i love to i much prefer doing remote sessions than studio stuff because i, I always feel that I can give a bit more, you know, I can kind of like really, you know, like if you're in the studio and like clock's ticking or whatever, you're like, mm. I want to try this, but you know, he's got to put his drums down. Do you know what I mean? You've got that. I think mm. that you can relax a lot more, right? Yeah. And, well, uh, that, 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 Put more of yourself into it. That's certainly the case. Yeah. It's, it's always like nice to have that luxury of, um, of not, uh, you know, fighting against the clock, like you say. Um, yeah, and it's good. I, I've been lucky enough to, to do it for lots of different people. Um, I've just had people contact me, you know, and, and say, oh, would you mind playing on my album or on this track or something? 
Um, I, yeah, it's great. I, I've been, yeah, uh, lucky enough to work with some great guys like that. So, uh, yeah. If anybody, I should you see, I'm not selling myself well enough, am I? Hello, everybody. <laughs> no, gonna, if anybody <laughs> wants me to play on their record, get in touch. I'm very reasonably priced. <laughs> Uh, just uh, John, do you send Nathan an email? <laughs> <laughs> so um, touring can be pretty full on. I know, and I know that when certainly when you're with Level Forty Two, um, I know you've had some pretty heavy duty touring schedules. How do you kind of keep yourself, you know, almost sane when when you're away? I mean that that life is it's not for it's not for the faint hearted. It's not for everybody, is it? So it's not. It can be really tough um, because. Um, you know, it, it can be, even though you're with, um, you know, you've got your family, your touring family, and we're very lucky, you know, in, in when all the bands I play with, um, I, I, I only kind of work with nice people, you know, and I, yeah. uh, but I'm lucky because I always ever seem to work with nice people, you know, and I couldn't have it any other way. So Level 42, for instance, is a whole family of guys that have been doing it for years, you know, our, our sound yeah. guys. Um, you know, and our lighting guys, um, and, and, and the band personnel, um, the, the whole sort of shebang, you know, it's just like a, a big family. Brilliant. So it's, um, it's, it's great. You know, it's, it's always really nice. It's, and of course we haven't been able to do it now for, for 12 months. We were supposed to go out last, uh, spring. I was supposed yeah. to go to Japan and Australia and New Zealand and Singapore and stuff and do a whole tour out there. Well, that was the first yeah. thing they got canned. Uh, and then we were supposed to go out last autumn uh, and do uh, two months, uh, you know, it's a UK tour and then Europe tour. Well, that got canned. That's been pushed forward now to uh, this October. Um, so, yeah. so, you know, it's a fingers crossed um you know, we'll be able we'll be able to do that this year um because that's you know th that was going to be our 40th anniversary tour funny enough last year right course, you know and right. we couldn't do that so um yeah. yeah that that kicks off a second and uh october 2021 i was like all being well touch wood that that you know that things are um go as planned you know and uh and we can get out and start gigging again because we've got some other festival stuff coming as well um we're, we're in hungary Hopefully on the 29th of July and Camp Best of All we're supposed to be doing on the 31st of July, you know. So, yep. again, fingers crossed that th these things are going to happen, you know. So um, Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, it's looking up, I think. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, I, and just getting back to your original question, what? Um, what yeah, it, it's, a, it's a funny one, touring, you know, because it, it can be very Groundhog Day, of course. Um, yeah. A, a, a lot of it we just do on a, a, on a bus. So, you, you know, you sort of do the sound check and then... You get a bit of downtime, you do your show. And then after that, the guys pack all the gear up and they load it onto a lorry and then you get on your buses and then uh, you drive off, you know, have a little uh, shandy or something. And then uh, go, uh, you know, drive overnight to the next town and you yeah. wake up somewhere completely different and then you do it all again. The guys set all the gear up and you go sound check and you do the show. And, blah, 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 and, you know, but all, of course, every time the show has to be 100%, you know, all has to be, you've got to really focus on making it all as oh, good yeah. as it can be. Um, uh, yeah, and, and it can get very strange, you know, just doing that sort of relentlessly. Um, but of course, it's something that you get used to, you know, if, it, if it's what you do, you know, a lot of the time, then you just, you get used to doing it, you know. And it is difficult when you've got family, you know, uh, you know, my wife and I've got a couple of nephews, it's, it's always hard. And you try and get home when you can. Um, and, but then on the other side of things, you know, because I'm not always out on the road touring. So I'm very lucky. I, when I'm not touring, I get loads of time to spend with my family anyway, you know, so... Uh, Brilliant, yeah. It's all swings and roundabouts, really, to be honest with you. I know I'm, I'm away... When I'm away, I'm away a lot. And then when I'm not, I'm at home a lot, you know, so... Uh, right. So, yeah, like you say, swings and roundabouts. What advice would you have, if any, to, like, young buddy musicians starting out, they decide they, they want to be a pro, they want, want that to be the job or their life, if you like? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny you should say that because another um, thing that's come around with this whole lockdown thing is uh, I, I've started doing something that I'd never done before, which was teaching, doing online teaching. Yeah. Because obviously I, I, I had to find some way of generating a bit of income because all the gig money had dried up, you know. 
Cool. Um, and uh, so I, I sort of put a thing uh, out saying, well, look, you know, if anybody's interested, I'll, I'll do some, uh, some, you know, Zoom lessons. And uh, I had a really good uptake on that. That was great. And, um, and it's been really interesting, uh, you know, uh, just teaching all, all different ages of people and all different levels, all different standards. Um, yeah. Most of most of which are very good, I have to say. You know, uh, the, most most people are playing really well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's a it's a very interesting a lad that I was just teaching um, on the weekend because he wanted to, um, he, you know, Wolfpack. You know that band? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, they got this great bass player called Joe Dart, and it's very uh, yes. you know really really great tidy bass player. You know, and this this lad yeah. just wanted to know how to play some of that stuff, you know, he'd already had the basics. He just want to know some of the little trickier bits. And so, you know, I'll sit down and I'll sort of deconstruct that stuff, you know, and it's great, you know, for me to be able to do yeah. that uh, and learn, uh, you know, so, some of these other other songs that I normally wouldn't look at, you know. Sure. Um, uh, again, I'm sort of straying away from your question. What, what advice would I have? I'm, I, I'm thinking of this, you know, this lad, of, for instance, you know, and yeah, it, it what advice? I should, I, should, I should have some sage words of wisdom, <laughs> which I shall now improvise. <laughs> Don't take drugs. <laughs> Be nice to your mum. Um, yeah, just work really hard, right? That's that's the that's it. You just work hard. You know, if you if you want a career in music, you got to work really hard because you yeah. you have to be the best. You know, absolutely. And, um, you, you can't really, you know, you, there's no easy way of, of, of making it in a music business. If you want to be a professional musician, if you don't, great, just to have fun with it, you know. Sure. I was, you should have fun with it anyway. But of course, you know, if, yeah, if, yeah. If, if you want to make a career out of it, you've really got to work hard, you know, make really do your homework, learn, uh, you know, learn all the stuff properly and just have a, a good attitude, you know, a good professional attitude. But, you know. Uh, that's kind of common sense, isn't it? Um, I think it is. I think my answer would be, don't bother. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's, too, it's too hard. No, no I'm only kidding. Uh, so, well, I'm, yeah. lucky, I, I'm lucky, right, because I've had a, I've been able to make, um, uh, you know, just been, been able to make my living out of it. And it's yeah. great. It's, it's, it's just a great, a great job. You know, it's the best job it in is. the world. Because I, yeah. it, it, I really like entertaining people, you know, however that may be, even if it's doing Anderton's. So I still enjoy that as an entertainment factor. But going out yeah. on stage and playing, uh, you know, it's such a privilege to, to do that as a job, you know, and make loads of people happy. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's great. No, yeah, if, if that's what you want to do, then just follow your, your, your dream and your heart and, and do it, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You talked about your early influences. Um and you've just mentioned Joe Dart and teaching. That's kind of cool because it's bringing new influences in that, that you perhaps wouldn't have, you know, dug into. Is there anybody that you kind of really into at the minute, or do you kind of tend to go back to the stuff you've always listened to? Or yeah, I do. I, yeah, I do tend to kind of go back to the stuff that I've always liked. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there, there, as I said earlier, there, there is lots of good new stuff about. There, there's not, there's not anything that's kind of really massively different. I suppose yeah. you know, it's like Joe Dark, great bass player and stuff. Obviously, a big Jacko fan, you know. Yeah, and um, so you can see where a lot of his influences come from. Um, yeah, I, I do. I, I do. I, I, yeah, I'm a bit sort of boring, I suppose, and, and can't listen to the same stuff. But then I've got a very eclectic sort of musical taste anyway. I, I listen to such. A lot of diverse stuff um you know it's, it's a huge you know because i really like pop music you know I, I, mm, um, yeah but it, 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 but if it's good pop music you know if a yes. stock and waterman then forget it uh you know because it's just musical drivel but you know yeah. I, you know i think um what's a what's a good example earth wind and fire for instance right just uh, this amazing right. music yeah. i love earth wind and fire because it's just really happy jolly uplifting music um, and it's just, you know, it's great. You can't go wrong with that stuff, you know. No, um, so I'll can't. always go back. I'll always go back and listen to stuff like that. But like I said, I've got such a huge, uh, 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 I can't remember the word, but, you know, sort of spectrum of stuff um, that, I, yeah. that I like to listen to. Yeah, is there anything new? I, 
don't think so. Like I say, when Heart comes on and that, that the latest Dua Lipa track, it's just great. You think, oh, yeah, that sounds great. I like, uh, but I like it as a whole, you know, just like the production. Yeah. It's, they've done a really great job on it. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not going like, oh, I really like the whatever that part is. You know, it's just a whole sure. thing. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of with you there anyway. I'm, <laughs> I just kind of like, you know, the, my, my playlist that I put together, it's like, really, am I listening to that again? But yeah, <laughs> it's still really great, you know? Well, that's um, the thing. If it's great, it's great, you know? And there's, there's yeah, there's, well, there's no reason. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, that's what I always exactly. say. So I always find myself going back to the same things just because I love them, you know? Yeah. Just one last question, uh, Nathan, and that is, is there any, obviously we've got the Frost album, that's massive, and that's really exciting. Mm. Is there anything else kind of new or, or different in the pipeline, or is it more a case of just looking forward to getting back on tour, getting back out there, and uh, getting back to work, really? It's, it is all of those things, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, looking really forward uh, to get back out and playing again because uh, it's been such a long time, you know, and that's, it's been a strange time. But like I say, there, there's been some really good upsides to it. So teaching, um, you know, that, that that I will continue to do that because um, I've really enjoyed that. I, I find it um, uh, interesting. And I know that, uh, that other people find it helpful too. Yeah. Uh, you know, so uh, I'll continue to do that if anybody uh, wants uh <laughs> Want some bass lessons? Uh, tap me up on Facebook, you know, because I'm I'm very happy to do that. Very re re reasonably priced, Governor. Uh, it's not expensive. <laughs> tap me up. I'm at um, so tap that's me up that's as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I should get some off of you, mate. Um, so that yeah, the Frost album's coming out. Love Forty Two. We'll, we'll be touring again soon, hopefully. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's all good, you know. It's it's all good stuff. Um, yeah, just cool looking forward to things trying to get back a bit more to normal as everybody else is of course you know yeah yeah definitely i think we'll we'll all appreciate it like even more i think than um, than we we did before so yeah thanks a bunch for that nathan it's been amazing to have you on and uh, it's been my it. my pleasure scott thank you very much mate sorry to keep interrupting you because i know all the comments will say that why doesn't he stop interrupting him because i get it on anderson's <laughs> all the time because that's the thing about that's you know that's what i learned on anderson's the first thing you need to do right if you're going to have an online presence you need to develop a, a thick skin very quickly because uh, <laughs> yeah. honestly so people they don't uh, you know sugarcoat their uh, responses in the comments section so uh, yeah not one bit not one bit no they don't so, lot, sorry for, sorry for interrupting and doing it again then. i did it then i'm doing it <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot nathan it's been absolutely fantastic and uh yeah maybe we'll do it again sometime i'd absolutely love to scott it's been a, a privilege and honor thank you sir for inviting me and uh yeah hello to everybody out there and uh i hope you're having uh, a good time in this lockdown and let's all get out there and start playing again soon huh Absolutely. Cheers, Nathan. Bye. Nathan King. Not just a great player, but what a lovely guy as well. I'm sure you enjoyed listening to his stories just as much as I did. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments box below. There'll be lots more of this kind of content to come. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.